Hello, everyone. Good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Uh, welcome to this edition of the MuleSoft Online Meetup. My name is Royston Lobo. Uh, I'm a technical architect in the customer success team at MuleSoft, and I'm presenting to you out of Sydney today. Uh, I'm very honored, joy of introducing uh, John Moses and Monica Racha onto a, a session this hour today. Uh, it's a fun fact, uh, and it's a very rare fact that this is a father-daughter combo. Uh, so it's very rare to have a father-daughter certified group of MuleSoft developers out there. So really excited to see them uh, present the Snowflake and Kafka integration using MuleSoft. Um, if you haven't done so already, please introduce yourself in the chat function on the right-hand side. Uh, you can add in your name and where you're tuning in from. Um, I've also put in a link to the MuleSoft Hackathon, which is currently active and is accepting submissions all the way until November 29. If you have any uh, comments you'd like to make during the presentation, you can use the chat function as well. Uh, I'm also going to paste in a link for Q&A. So if you have any questions for the presenters, we'll be using the, the link in the chat that I've just pasted. Um, you can put your own questions in and you can also upvote other people's questions as well. And then what I'll do is towards the end of the session, I'll be taking the questions that have not been answered uh, and then we'll be pre presenting them to our speakers today. Um, with that, uh, yes, thank you again for joining us. The slides uh, and the recording will be made available on the event page at the end of the session. Oh, sorry, at the end of the day, uh, so within 24 hours. Uh, so you can catch it over there as well. With that, John, Monica, uh, please take over and uh, introduce yourselves. Thank you very much. Hi, uh, thanks, thanks, uh, uh, Royston. Uh, it's, it's nice to be here um, uh, from Melbourne, out there, it's a sunny day. And uh, yeah, so uh, thanks everyone, uh, first of all, for your time uh, in uh, uh, showing the interest and uh, uh, joining this event. Uh, myself, John Moses, um, uh, around uh, almost, uh, a couple of decades of uh, uh, IT experience, out of which more than 15 years in the integration space, and uh, currently work for Capgemini. Um, so uh, an integration architect, designer, and a developer. Uh, till now, I like to quote, um, an API evangelist, uh, basically worked uh, for uh, many sectors. Uh, and uh, yeah, so a uh, winner of Asia's largest hackathon uh, conducted by uh, uh, Australian Computer Society. Um, about myself, uh, apart from the official uh, professional life, like you know, I'm a sports freak, I do triathlons, um, uh, I am an Ironman triathlete, I am a soccer coach and a player, um, played for a few clubs in here, and then uh, I would like to swim a few, uh, few times the English Channel. Uh, that's my latest uh, uh, addiction, I would say. Um, so over to Monica. Thanks, John. Uh, myself, I'm Monica. I'm a MuleSoft consultant uh, in Capgemini. So apart from that, I'm also doing uh, research on IoT, you know, solving uh, real life problems, focusing mainly on uh, smart cities. I also like to do painting and uh, traveling during my free time. And I also took part in a hackathon this year and uh, we won a second prize in education challenge. So I'm looking forward to share my experience, uh, you know, integrating Snowflake and uh, Kafka using Microsoft. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let's get started. Today's agenda. What's cooking today? Um, so event-driven architecture. Um, so why event-driven architecture today is because we are talking uh, Kafka, um, uh, which is world's number one uh, streaming uh, platform, uh, and um, uh, like you know. Um, the uh, uh, which uh, is a market leader in complex event processing as well, uh, and uh, this um, then like you know we are going to talk about Snowflake. So combining the um, event-driven architecture along with complex event processing uh, using MuleSoft is uh, a, a deadly uh, uh, combination to um, uh, to uh, uh, provide solutions for any kind of problems uh, that that uh, handles like you know big data or large data. And uh, so we'll talk about some of the common use cases in uh, event-driven architecture, and then why MuleSoft is so powerful combining these two both. 
sitting in the middle um and uh, we talk about like you know what kafka's role in the event driven architecture plays uh, uh plays uh, uh, in in uh, in uh, current global situation uh, especially with uh, with the pandemic around and then we have uh, like you know the, the data is the key um so and then we talk about uh confluent uh, uh, a bit which is the uh, cloud based streaming platform uh, that was kafka um um so then like you know we talk about different connectors uh, out of the box mules of connectors that uh, uh, seamlessly connect with uh, uh, these these two applications and then like you know we'll uh, uh, at the end like you know uh, monica is going to be uh, showing some uh, some of the uh, uh, flow uh, flows that she has built to uh, uh, for a for a specific use case which we are going to walk through yeah so uh, <clears throat> what is um, uh, what is event driven architecture uh, so it's basically uh, can you go back to the previous slide here? sorry um, so um, basically like you know it is uh, in a, in a traditional world like you know we were we were using um, like you know uh, the database things the the file reads and uh, uh, like you know because uh, and uh, like you know uh, the uh, the daily schedules uh, using files and database polling and uh, inserts updates in 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 olden ages um so right now like you know the uh, the, the entire uh, integration patterns change uh, being from tradition traditional integration patterns now we are talking about like you know uh, two way sync async notifications async request reply and then like you know the the uh, the globe has been expanded uh, more and uh, like you know the, the di distributed databases distributed uh, um, uh, message queuing systems so uh, event driven architecture is something like you know which we can make use of uh, uh, chunking a big uh, big set of data into smaller chunks and then stream it at at, uh, at a continuous uh, a continuous space at a continuous interval so that like you know we can um, uh, we can handle huge amount of data uh, at ease in in uh, very uh, very less time so that uh, gives uh, a, a problem as well because like you know, instead of having one whole set of integrated data you are going to have multiple chunks so how we are going to um, process that that brings in the complex event processing engine uh, into picture where like you know the uh, the traditional uh, tools like you know in the uh, uh, 19th century tools like you know tipco web methods are like you know um, um uh, are like you know falling behind to adapt to the cloud uh, cloud based complex event processing engine um that's where like you know it is so powerful that mulesoft has this uh, this particular um uh, the the seamless uh, uh connectivity across uh, multiple applications and also like you know how easily it can uh, it can uh, support the complex event processing um so some of the common use cases of eda are like say stock market tickers right so like you know the stock market is so volatile uh, especially at this point in time um or like you know whenever there is a there is a recession or, or an election or whatever so the the amount of data that that's being transformed between the the actual market and the and the market brokers and the consumers like you know it's 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 huge and in terms of like you know sucking every second the data is uh, very critical for the brokers to make some informed decisions so stock market is one of the use case in eda uh, when it comes to um uh, comes to sports like you know i i closely follow f1 wherein the the data that uh, that the, the f1 driver runs in what is the performance of the engine what is the what is the um, wear and tear of the of the tire what is the weather conditions so all those things needs to be relayed back in re near real time not in real re uh, near real time real time to the uh, to the to the support team to make the proper decisions which can uh, which can uh, which can um, uh, be very decisive in in a race outcome so, so these are some of the common use cases we have um, why mules of the so powerful because it has apache kafka connector um, a snowflake connector you name a, a, a snowflake jdbc connector uh, not um, not the actual connector which i think 
it is uh, a, uh, it is in development uh, if i'm not not wrong um, and then like name any any uh, uh, market leading uh, ipass sas or uh, any any um, erps market leading erps crm cloud based or on premise it has a connector so that's why mulesoft is so powerful in this context then we have uh, like in you know, a kafka which we already talked about kafka has like in you know, a multiple uh, flavors you can you can have it as an on premise or have it uh, running in a docker container in a, in a in a aws or azure cloud or you have conf confluent where you have um uh, a, a hosted kafka managed uh, streaming platform uh, so today we we touch base uh, our our showcases mainly revolves around uh, around confluent and then we have snowflake's sync connector where like another you know, confluence out of the box as well as apache's out of the box connector that is that is around okay so now um uh, so feel free to you know post a message in the chat window if i am going uh, a bit fast uh, because this uh, there are we are touching multiple multiple areas and the, the content is it, it's a bit deep so i wanted to like you know have a time bound um uh, uh, approach to like you know cover uh, almost whatever like you know we had been putting together so feel free to um uh, uh, mention in the in the chat window okay so let's move on so today's uh, today's scenario is uh, is is a typical scenario that that uh, is happening in in current state uh, across the globe um, so wherein uh, there are um, it, it it revolves around the um, uh, energy and the utility sector where like you know we customers like you and me are uh, like you know using the uh, using the electricity or gas <clears throat> so using the electricity or gas and uh, like you know how uh, how the uh, uh, how the data is being uh, like you know shared between uh, the retailers distributors generators the the, the market hub uh, like you know um, uh, seamlessly for us to like you know have uh, like you know the correct billing data the correct spot, spot pricing data the correct bidding data the correct uh, um uh, correct discounts and everything so uh, uh, the the scenario which we picked is uh, mainly around like you know the business to business and business to uh, market uh, solutions um uh, market solution for the utility sector what is the current problem currently like you know almost all the distributors and uh, distributors retailers and the generators are running their uh, esb platform on premise and it is running at capacity with smart meter coming into picture in in all all countries like you know all all the developed countries so the the ask of sharing the data much more often than a traditional traditional way is is being pushed by the um, respective regulatory authorities across multiple countries so that means like the the existing on premise uh, solution which is running might be pushed to its limit to to adapt to the uh, change that has been coming in that industry what is the proposed or potential solution we are we are providing is using mulesoft which revolves uh, uh, runs as a heart heartbeat of this solution connecting to like you know the uh, retailers distributors and all the participants uh, in the, in this particular scenario uh, uh connecting to kafka using kafka and snowflake how we can build an b2b ecosystem to um, uh, handle not only this problem in any any other problem yeah okay so can you move on to the next one yeah so this is this is the current uh, current on prem e, uh, esb solutions that uh, i was talking about so you can see the distributors sharing the consumption data billing market the service orders for uh, like you know for a new connection for a for a disconnection for a meter rate um, uh, um, and for um, like say reenergization uh, energization all kind of uh, um, information sharing to the market hub on the other end we have generators who generate the electricity who uh, negotiate with the market hub to say okay whether um, uh, like you know what what is the amount of electricity Uh, that like you know from our various plants, be it a hydro, nuclear, wind, or solar. 
so uh, how we can uh, sell the sell the electricity that we produce to the market hub and that that's where like you know the the spot price and bidding process comes in uh, uh, between like you know the um, uh, uh, various generators so and then like you know we have retailers on the other hand who buy the uh, uh, electricity from the distributors and then like you know i have um, uh, sell it to the end using uh, end user customers like you know you and me so they on a daily basis on a, on a on a very frequent basis like you know we have um we are sending the sending and receiving the meter reads unregistered meter read adjusted meter reads for the invoice purpose the connection disconnections for the end customers the customer details the site notifications and many many more so i picked some of the common use cases here that like you know uh, the all the all the relevant participants interacting with market hub what it means it is it is all uh, like you know going into on premise the solutions and uh, uh, and the underlying system taking much more turnaround time and which uh, like affect all the various parties in in various uh, different ways so the proposed solution is yep yeah, so um uh, uh, introducing mule soft uh, like you know which has uh, and bringing in the the uh, building the entire solution in cloud rather than having it on premise building a solution in cloud uh, to handle the same data um and like you know provide much more seamless integration seamless data exchange uh, in both b2b and b2m scenarios to uh, in between the participants so um uh, here like you know we talking about the same kind of data where like you know it is flowing through uh, the mules of any point platform uh to uh, uh, to seamlessly like you know uh, in, interact between the participants okay so what what we did we created uh, um, a few mules of flows to replicate some of the main components that we talked about in the solution we have a market message processor that uh, uh, that who is going to uh, that uh, that receive the message messages from the market be it from uh, like you know uh, the retailer or a distributor or a um, or a, a generator uh, receives the market messages uh, in in uh, um, uh, api manager in mulesoft and then like you know um, process that uh, underlying information transforms it whatever the business logic that it is supposed to do it does that and then publishes into a kafka topic so then we have Kafka Snowflake connector, uh, which listens to the particular topics. So in this case, like you know, we showcase only one topic. In an ideal scenario, we will be having uh, the 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 uh, multiple topics uh, for each each retailer, each distributor, each generator, um, and then like you know, keep on and also like you know, drill down if you want to to have each topic for a particular. Uh, uh business uh data domain uh like be it billing information or an outage information so that like you know the um uh, the data flows only through that pipeline and without like you know, having to you know interact or disturb any other any other uh, uh, uh business data so um we have something called uh, snowflake sync connector which is out of the box uh connectivity uh, mechanism for uh, listening to a, a, a kafka topic which picks up the messages and then like you know seamlessly sends it to snowflake uh, in 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 the background with within a span of like you know a seconds and then we build uh, some streams which uh, in the during the demo monica will showcase uh, about like you know what are all the uh, uh, what are all the available uh, um, uh, concepts in snowflake that makes it effective and makes it uh, one of the leading uh, cloud based data warehouse uh, where you can build data lakes and uh, one of its roi um, like you know i think i read it's about like you know 620% roi return on interest for people for the customers who moved from on premise data warehouses to snowflake warehouse and uh, um so 
then we build a, a snowflake outbound data processor um, like you know which listens to the uh, the application table the the emulated or simulated application tables the, um, uh, from snowflake and reads the message and then like you know delivers to the downstream and you know, participants yeah so um, uh, I will leave uh, so this is uh, a, a bit of technical slide I will leave uh, um, Monica to explain about the uh, different properties, um, uh, the mules of Apache Kafka connector and its features, what magic it can do. And then uh, again, uh, like, you know, we have some confluence. Yeah. So we have uh, uh, Kafka slash confluence Snowflake sync connector, how you can connect to Snowflake uh, from Kafka, listening to your Kafka topics and uh, yeah, so uh, I'll leave Monica to explain all those stuff uh, during the demo time. Okay, so um, now, so we, why, what are the benefits? What are the tangible benefits that we, uh, we uh, think that a uh, cloud-based uh, uh, EDA uh, API solution uh, using this, this particular, uh, uh, using MuleSoft, to build this B two B ecosystem, uh, is you can have a sustainable, reliable, and distributed streaming platform, streaming solution, which runs at the heart of MuleSoft. It, it it it's it's perfect for uh, like you know any any global uh, hubs that they want to you know, seamlessly design a solution and then run it purely on cloud. Then. This um, what what uh, having the likes of Kafka and Snowflake uh, and uh, the API led architecture in MuleSoft any point platform like you know the solution is hundred percent scalable both vertically as well as horizontally where like you know in in MuleSoft you can increase the number of workers like you know to have like you know to scale the solution like vertically. Uh, horizontally and you can also increase the uh, like you know number of cores like you know to have that um, uh, to have the solution um, uh, scalable like in horizontally as well um, in terms of like you know throughputs right so um, we uh, we were testing like you know, playing around with like you know uh, the throughputs of uh, how fast uh, a mule soft can process a message how fast a Kafka topics can receive the message how, how fast like you know it can it can publish and it can like you know send it to a snowflake using that it's out of the box connector um and uh, like you know the 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 uh, throughput time is like you know four times faster like you know using mills of kafka connectors rather than like you know having other on premise like you know ibm mq based uh, solutions and 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 all other messaging platforms then uh, from uh, a bit about like you know snowflakes capability of uh, like you know it's it's data loading and the data exchange patterns <clears throat> so there is uh, this concept of snow pipes in um, uh, in snowflake where like it can read large files from aws s3 bucket which holds um, uh, any number of data uh, like in, in terms of millions and it can uh, push into the uh, staging tables uh, uh, within Snowflake, um, uh, in, residing in Snowflake within a matter of few seconds. So these are some of the um, benefits that, like you know, we uh, are seeing on on this particular solution. Okay. So what are the? Uh, oh, okay. So we'll come back to this slide. So with that uh, in in uh, in mind, uh, I will hand over uh, to Monica. Uh, for uh, showing the demo and it's show time. Yep. Thanks, John. So now I'll take you to the demo. So this Mule application uh, acts like a client application which uh, simulates uh, the same functionality what uh, retailer does, like streaming uh, meter data frequently. So this flow uh, reads uh, the meter data and it publishes it to uh, a topic using um, Kafka Connect. So uh, let me run this application. Can you just show the uh, uh, the Kafka connection properties? Go back yeah. to that slide and then I think. 
Yeah. Yeah. I'll just show you the connector configuration properties. So these are the properties that are required uh, for Kafka Connect. Uh, main thing is uh, the Bootstrap server and uh, the other properties as well. So uh, where I got all these uh, details, I'll show you that as well. So uh, when after creating an account in uh, Confluent Cloud, this I'll log in and I'll show you. So after uh, creating an account in uh, Confluent, we'll be creating a cluster and a topic. So I'll show you the topic which I have created. This is the metadata topic. And uh, the properties details, we can uh, find it here in clients. You can go there and So here are the properties details. So I've used the same thing. Yeah, so you can pick up the properties from here and then use it in Kafka Connector mm -hmm. uh, in MuleSoft. To yeah. connect to the mm -hmm. Kafka Connect. So what it does is uh, it uh, pushes all the messages to Kafka Connect to that particular topic which I have created. So let me run this application and uh, then show you. So I've uh, created a directory where I'll uh, place 200 records in that particular directory and it reads those records and publishes it to Kafka topic. So what is the, uh, what is the response time like, you know, for, uh, for hundred records just for publishing? So this is the starting time, which I have recorded and then uh, this is the end time. Okay. So it seems like it's around, uh, it's around, say um uh 800 milliseconds yeah 800 yeah. Milliseconds. yeah so it's 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 very negligible and then i think i think we ran a few more uh, hundreds of records as well yeah, yeah. so let's let's see like in a where it is indented so yeah mm. so after uh, creating a topic the next comes the connector so i've used a snowflake uh, sync connector so what it does is uh, it consumes all the messages, uh, whichever is in topic and uh, pushes it to a staging table in Snowflakes. So I'll show you the settings as well, like the connector settings. So these are the informations like uh, which topic we are connecting and uh, this is the Snowflake database configuration details. Mm -hmm. So after configuring uh, this, you can see that in Snowflake, it creates a staging table called metadata. Metadata. Yeah, metadata, sorry. Metadata automatically when we publish the message for the first time. So if I run this command, we should be able to see the information. So it had loaded the data, the metadata. So the main thing uh, here is uh, we have uh, meter data stream and uh, merge. These are the two main functionalities in uh, Snowflakes. So what uh, meter data stream does is uh, it uh, temporarily stores all the actual data, what we had in uh, meter data, and it tracks all the uh, actions, like whether we are inserting the record or deleting. Yeah. So uh, I, I, adding to that, so streams, uh, and merge, uh, like as, as Monica mentioned, it's 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 very pow powerful. Uh, uh, reason is uh, it it enables uh, to implement a change data capture pattern uh, in in a cloud-based data warehouse. So where I don't think like you know, we have a similar kind of uh, um, uh, pattern enablement uh, or architecture is present in other other tools. Um, uh, so what it does is. Uh, it listen the streams are basically uh, 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 pseudo tables uh, temporary tables what it does is it uh, listens to a particular um, table staging table and it uh, keeps on like listening to the table on what are the changes that's happening be it insert delete or update so um, and it track keeps a track of a record uh, uh, along with the payload and its action so there are, I think, uh, what are the three uh, uh, columns that it, it uh, uses? 
this metadata, means metadata, metadata action. action yeah and uh, we have uh, something called a unique row id and then we have something called uh, uh, is update so it has these metadata along with the uh, along with the uh, uh, with the data makes it like you know um, e uh, to uh, easier to implement change data capture mm -hmm. and um, uh, the the best part is once the merge statement or merge is being executed it flushes out uh, all the data in the streams so that like you know only the changed data will be in that stream at any given point in time yep. can you show so yeah i'll just run this command and show you like whatever the information is there so yeah. i've inserted 200 records so you can see here the stream uh, already has 200 records mm -hmm. in it. And, and and it has and it has the action called uh, inserted and uh, update and it also has the key metadata yeah. row id yeah so um and yeah so why why are we using merge statement monica so merge statement uh, we are uh, trying to uh, do adjustment uh, for the meter data like doing the uh, calculations over there and then we will uh, produce it to the uh, distributor like market hub yeah so it's it's basically to simulate uh, some business process that is being executed by the market hub. So we are simulating. So assuming that your yeah, yeah, stored procedure or any other business process that it kicks off uh, on on the on the staging table and uh, on on the uh, um, uh, staging table and then like you know cleans the data and uh, pushes that into the the actual application data. So yeah. Now I'll uh, run this uh, merge command. I'll show you. So after running this, what it happens is it will clear all the information in uh, stream, which we have seen already. So let's have a look at the stream now. Yep, it should be empty. Yeah, so you can see here all the all the records that is in the streams has disappeared, meaning the merge statement consumed. Uh, uh, the merge has been consumed. All the uh, changed data in the stream and then pushes into the uh, the the market table. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we have developed a new application which uh, keeps on reading uh, the market meter data and uh, once it reads so here we are uh, connecting to snowflake using a uh, generic uh, jdbc connector i'll just show you the properties which i'm using so this is the snowflake uh, properties that we are using to connect to J snowflake like jdbc and then driver class username and password mm -hmm. Yeah, so at present in the market, uh, I think yeah. uh, we don't have the uh, uh, Snowflake connector. Uh, I think, I think, as, as I mentioned before, there there are. Uh, 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 I think there is some development happening in the background, uh, which we will be soon getting a Snowflake connector. Uh, so, for to to uh, uh, to showcase the outbound flow, that how we can connect to Snowflake and extract the data out of it. And uh, like you know, there is a, a the simple JDBC um, um, connector will do our job. It can connect to any database object, and then it can pull the data, push the data, and whatever similar to what we do in here. Yeah. So yeah. So it keeps on uh, pulling on that uh, particular table, and then uh, insert into an another uh, adjustable meter tag. So it has already been uh, inserted. So we'll just check this. So here we can see that all the data has been uh, inserted in adjusted uh, market meter data. So this one, it uh, uh, shares it with the market hub and all. So this is uh, functionality. Yeah. So uh, yeah. So uh, what 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 it means is like you know we are trying to simulate some business process that happen on the market hub and uh, it. Uh, ends up um, um, in 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 an application table, like say in 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 a in a functional perspective. 
So there is something called unadjusted metadata. There is something called adjusted metadata. Uh, so which the market uh, uses uh, to like you know uh, tran uh, trans um, exchange between the retailers and distributors, and the re retailers used it for the estimate either for estimated invoice process or the actual invoice process. So uh, so that that's what like you know we try to replicate that functionality. So assume that that business process is adjusted metadata is completed and it's there in the table and MuleSoft connects to that table, picks it up, and then sends it to the uh, relevant uh, third parties or, or, or the relevant participants. So yeah, and uh, a few things that uh, uh, comes into uh, my mind when it comes to the connector, Kafka connector is either you can use it to connect to uh, a Confluent cloud or with the minimal uh, changes to its properties, you can connect to on premise as well or you can connect to uh, any um, uh, any kafka instance that is running in a docker container in in your aws or azure platform um so can you uh, go to the presentation okay so here are some takeaways <clears throat> that like you know we can we can uh, i would like to highlight based on like you know uh, the, uh, mostly from a technical uh, standpoint okay so Mule, as I said, MuleSoft Kafka connector can be easily configured to both uh, um, on-premise as well as cloud, confident cloud versions. And then it, uh, it handles uh, a, a significant number of larger throughputs in an efficient manner. So when it comes to uh, Snowflake connector, currently there is no connector. We can use a simple generic JDBC connector with write uh, uh, the JDBC driver classes. And uh, and the uh, and the JDBC URL, like you know, to connect to Snowflake, and then um, uh, one of the highlights of Snowflake um, for change data capture is the its streams and merge, which is easy to implement two-way data sync. Um, and uh, when it comes to Snowflake sync connector, um, so you can you can again like you know you can it's easy to configure it in cloud Confluent cloud as Monica showed. Uh, and also, like you know, you can run it on premise. Um, well, like you know, there is a simple batch file. Um, I think it is connect type standalone dot that uh, uh, and pass pass on the relevant properties in a config file, and boom, like you know, you can just start it, and then it it, it runs. And also, uh, the the good part is uh, the by default the Kafka connect Snowflake sync connector. Uh, is exposed as REST APIs as well. And uh, the other thing which I didn't mention in here is the snow pipes. Uh, snow pipes can also be exposed uh, uh, out of the box, exposed as a REST API. So you can use MuleSoft to connect to Snowflake REST APIs and loads millions of millions of data like you know, at ease. Um, so from uh, uh, AWS S3 bucket into Snowflake. Move on to the next slide. Yeah. Okay. So I think that comes to a logical point of like you know the the functional uh, aspects of of the use case and the technical showcase of the demo. So how we can share the code? Currently, uh, the code is not in uh, a Git repo. So uh, as um, uh, and uh, like you know we'll make it available to Git repo and then share the. Uh, link uh, uh, like you know through Ryston in in the mules of event page, uh, and uh, the other way what we are thinking about is to uh, write up a blog, and then make available online, and then like you know uh, share the blog post link in the event page as well. So uh, as as Roy mentioned before, um, so it will be uh, it will be available once it is online. And I think I, I think that's that's the end. Uh, so we, um, uh, as, as this is one of my favorite quote: "Knowledge is the only asset that can grow when it is shared. All other assets, like you know, it, it uh, like you you keep on losing it, and uh, eventually, like you know, it, it become a liability. But knowledge is is the only thing that can grow. So as we all before, um, like share uh, your knowledge as much as you can." And makes the uh, make the MuleSoft community 
uh, like an as as bigger as Yava, and then as knowledge sharing platform as Yava. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you so much, John and Monica, for putting together that presentation and sharing your knowledge with us. Uh, we do have a, a number of questions from our audience today, so um, I'll I'll put some of them through to you and. Hopefully we can get them answered. Uh, just for anyone in the chat, um, you can show your words of appreciation in the chat as well as uh, throw in any questions using the Q&A link, which I'd posted in the chat as well. So let's start off with uh, this question. We've got one around uh, the connector. So is the MuleSoft connected the same for Apache Kafka and Confluent Kafka? Yeah, yes, Monica. It's, yeah. Uh, same for both uh, Apache Kafka and uh, Confluent uh, Kafka connector. So it works for both. Yeah. So uh, there might be a minute configuration changes yeah. uh, in the properties, but yeah, so the same. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you for answering that one. Uh, our next question is uh, from someone who's not very familiar with Kafka. So could you briefly describe what benefits Kafka would bring compared to any point MQ? Yeah, so uh, the, uh, I'll take this question, Monica. So uh, the, the main thing is like, uh, um, um, it's, it's underlying like in you know, a partition, right? So um, uh, the, the, the cluster mode, the architecture makes it like, you know, much, much, much more scalable. In terms of connectivity, in terms of technical connectivity, I, I don't think there is a like, you know, vast difference. You can use any point MQ and you can use uh, you know kafka but when it comes to like you know um, uh, the the specific use case where you have large throughputs and uh, 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 like you know it, it has to be distributed across across the globe um, like you know uh, so the, the the kafka connector is is uh, the, the kafka uh, stands stands out and also like you know the the uh, user interfaces um, uh, so i i normally use like you know, yeah, yeah, an open source tool called Kafka tool, where like you know you can manage your clusters, um, and Confluent has its own out of the box uh, thing to you know uh, uh, manage the cluster. Uh, Anypoint MQ uh, is um, uh, basically like you know uh, the, its underlying technology is AWS SQS, which is which is managed by MuleSoft, uh, like and and uh, at at a higher level at a UI level. But like you know, it is it is nothing but an AWS SQS queue running underneath. And again, like you know, you have to uh, spend a bit more time uh, to uh, make it like in you know, a distributed across the globe in any point MQ. Whereas in Confluent or Kafka, yes, like you know, it is it is it is much uh, much simpler. I would say, in my experience. Excellent. Thank you for that. Uh, our next question is around uh, how does Mule plus Kafka compared with Lambda or Kappa in AWS and Azure? And the, the other two are more cloud native and scalable. So I was wondering from an architectural perspective, how did you decide, how would you decide between one or the other as a solution? Yeah, so um, uh, good question. So uh, from architectural perspective, you know, again, it, it depends on the use case, right? So uh, Lambda, um, um, is like you know, serverless, right? And also, um, uh, it, what um, depends on the use case. Um, like I would, I would say, um, MuleSoft. Like you know, if if your use case, if your scenario is more into uh, like you know, specific ESB functionalities that it requires. For example, like in you know, a more transformation, message enrichment, and uh, uh, like in you know, a guaranteed delivery, and and all those stuff. Like you know, then you go with MuleSoft plus Kafka. If it is simple path through, or like you know, uh, yeah, yeah, two-way data sync with with uh, without having much um, uh, much uh, uh, features or functionalities of of uh, cloud-based ESB, then like you know, I would I would uh, you know uh, get uh, um, tend towards Lambda. Excellent. Thank you very much. Uh, we have a question around uh, licensing. So does Kafka and Snowflake require a license? Yeah, so uh, it's its community edition for non-commercial purpose, no. For commercial purpose, definitely yes. Okay, that's a simple one. Yeah. Um, 
our next question is uh, deletion. So topics published to Kafka are deleted after consumption. So I think that's the question. And if not, does Kafka have an inbuilt purging process? Um, I am not, or we are not Kafka experts, but I, uh, with my with my knowledge, definitely it should have a purging process. Like any traditional messaging platform, it 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 should have a purging process. Yes, yeah. Like for example, one one of the one of this uh, thing, like you know, uh, recently I was like. Uh, um, uh, uh, playing around with the rabbit MQ and its lazy queues. Yes, uh, it, it literally called us lazy queues, wherein like you know, it has, uh, it can persist the data like you know um, uh, uh, in, a, in a much more time, and uh, it, it's its queue depth is like you know in millions and millions, right? So where we normally like you know you uh, um, don't don't get um, in 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 a messaging platform. So um, so uh, when, again like you know when when it comes to like a queue which persists a message for a long time, obviously, like you know, my thought process went to what is the purging mechanism? Yes, like you know, there is a purging mechanism in all the uh, all the uh, messaging platforms, RabbitMQ, Beat, RabbitMQ, or like you know, uh, 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 point MQ or um, R Kafka. Definitely, yes. All right, thank you. Um, I have a question around JVM stability. So are there any scenarios you could end up with the JVM crash since you're using batch and it loads records before it processes? Did you use or configure any streaming mechanisms in the application? Uh, for this demo purpose, no. Uh, we haven't like, you know, configured any, any streaming. But uh, when, 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 it, when it comes to like, you know, implementing a, 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 a real solution of, of huge scale, definitely yes. And also, like you know, uh, async scope, right? Like yeah. yeah. So we can we can we can use async scope with and uh, and um, and stream it, like you know, to to a particular partition in a topic, rather than like you know, just use a topic and use uh, pick a particular partition in a uh, in a topic and then stream it, like you know, uh, I think current our current config how many partitions? Six, I believe. Yeah, yeah six, six partitions. Can can you uh, check that? Yes, yeah, so I think I think the, for demo purpose we have six partitions uh, configured, and then like you know it, it is we didn't target at a particular topic in a partition. Yeah, so we can we can look at few options as well. There. Excellent. So this one is for the the Kafka experts in the room. So how the, how does the Kafka messages get delivered in a HA environment? Ah. Okay, so in a in a HA environment, I think uh, that's where like you know the the cluster uh, cluster comes into place, like you know where mm -hmm. you have multiple clusters create multiple clusters running at at uh, at different regions or different uh, instances, and then have the topics uh, uh, configured in a in a, in a sharing mode, and that's where like you know, it, it delivers. In both uh, uh, both the nodes, uh, both both the clusters or multiple clusters in a HA environment. Again, like I'm not a Kafka expert, but uh, I'm I'm just answering with my uh, previous knowledge. Excellent. And if anyone else uh, has a view on that, feel free to share uh, uh, in the chat as a comment. Uh, our next question is around uh, performance. So, could you please share the maximum number of records your flow has handled? We uh, try to do 500 records, so it took around three seconds to publish uh, the message to the topic. And uh, even while uh, conception, yeah, it took around uh, three seconds yeah. from Snowflakes. Excellent. Thank you for that. Yeah, Maybe uh, we, haven't, we haven't like you know uh, extrapolated and uh, run like you know uh, uh, hundreds of thousands of records. Uh, but yeah, so like you know the as 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 we saw during the demo, like you know, it is it is micro uh, like milliseconds, right? So yeah, it it is it took like two and a half, if I'm not wrong, two and a half mm -hmm. two and a half seconds for like you know uh, five hundred or thousand. Thousand is the max. Yeah. Thank you. So our next question uh, is: uh, Do you know if the MuleSoft Kafka producer 
supports the Kafka scheme registry and the Avro data format instead of JSON messages? Um, we haven't looked into Avro messaging. Um, so we stick with JSON for this demo purpose. But yes, definitely uh, Apache Avro uh, format is, is, is popular as well. And it supports, yes. So what we need to do is there is a there is a properties uh, in in the config file where you specify um, like you know from this topic you use uh, JSON formatting and in this topic you use um, uh, you use uh, uh, Avro formatting. Excellent. Um, I see there was a question around RabbitMQ versus Kafka, but I think that overlaps with the question on AnyPointMQ versus Kafka. So um, we'll leave that response from earlier. It's my it's from my favorite Vikas Goel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Um, as far as I could tell, that's uh, all the questions. Uh, I mean, we obviously have the most important question about the English yeah. Channel Crossing. Yeah. Uh, any commentary around that on why you picked yeah. that as a challenge? Um, uh, well, we, we are still in the process of evaluating the pros and cons between uh, Rabbit and Kafka. Uh, uh -oh. But at this point in time, uh, and no. Uh, because you can you can call me. You have my number. You can call me if you want. We can discuss it at length. Yeah. Oh, I, I was more. Uh, I think the question was more around your English Channel pursuits and uh, English, why you chose that. Uh, okay. what, is, what I'm thinking is to uh, like, you know uh, swim for around 12 hours in the pool uh, to as a proof of concept. So because like you know the, the shortest distance uh, between uh, in an English Channel crossing can be. Uh, 33.4 kilometers um, mm -hmm. based on the weather condition. If it is too choppy, like you know, and, and the and the charter based on the time you swim, like you know, it is um, uh, it can it can uh, stretch a bit. But yeah, so 30 34 is what. So normally, like you know, if you swim at like you know 2 to 15 220 pace per 100 meters, it should take around like you know 13 14 hours. So proof of concept is 12 hours swim. So it sounds like it comes with a recommendation as well. So if anyone has some spare time on the weekend, they can, uh, yeah. they can swim the English Channel. <laughs> yeah, maybe with a mule flag uh, on your back as well. The one who asked this question is also a triathlete. <laughs> ah, excellent. That seems to be a theme of triathletes at your company. <laughs> Um, I think that covers all the questions that I spotted coming in through the chat. So a huge thank you to everyone who's asked a question and actively participated in the session. Uh, once again, um, thank you, John and Monica, for taking the time and effort for putting together the presentation and, and sharing the knowledge uh, with the community, which is obviously growing uh, every day. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the slides and recording will be posted on the Meetup page and any links to code will also be posted up on the Meetup page when it is ready. Uh, with that, uh, John, if people want to, uh, and Monica, if people want to learn more and reach out to you, what are the, what's the best way they can contact you? Yeah, LinkedIn, yeah, LinkedIn, and yeah, so LinkedIn is the, 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 the first point of contact would be appreciated. Okay, excellent. So if you can find John on LinkedIn, John and Monica on LinkedIn, then uh, you're more than encouraged to connect with them. Um, there's been a suggestion on making a YouTube recording of your entire POC, so that might be something you might want to consider as well. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yes, uh, yes, Kishan, like, and I will try to do that. And yeah, and uh, uh, we, we will try to address some of the open questions uh, uh, from this forum. In, in the YouTube uh, uh, recording, and then we'll publish it. Excellent. Great. Thank you very much, everyone. Uh, I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day wherever you are and you're safe. Uh, and we hope to see you at the next edition of the MuleSoft Online Meetup. Thank you and goodbye. Yep, thanks, Thank thanks everyone. I really appreciate it. Yep. So key thing, share your knowledge. Let's everyone grow along with each other. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Thanks. Bye.